But I remember the old Ted. He thought he'd evolved the thing with varnish and something that he was going to put on the bottom of the boat that was going to be so fat, so slick. So he tipped it up and let the tide go out. He laid the varnish with this compound he put in there, wax and stuff, and oh man, it looked like it looked like a mirror, you know. But he was ready. Well, I wasn't in the race. I was in another little old dumpy boat, and I was out <coughs> sailing over towards the pass. The fleet went out to go to go to the race. Look over here. Here's Mr. Kaminsky in the uh, pass with his boat heel down, the boys holding the mast, and he. Rescue was back there with one boy, and they were pulling sheets of that stuff off. Something wasn't working. <laughs> it didn't stick, I guess. It was unrolling, and they were just pulling it off like celluloid. <laughs> well, what about Tito? Did Tito sail with him? Yeah, yeah. And that's who t taught Tito how to sail, was Mr. Kamensky? Yeah, as well as he could. Yeah? <laughs> well, I think it's the alcohol poisoning. I think you know I like that. <laughs> That's I'm what a does it. A pelican, how he managed that all his life. And while I was working like hell, he was sitting up in some bar. Somebody was buying him drinks. I'm not jealous, but I think I, I, think I could be. Well, he was a great sailor. He certainly got a reputation. For sailing and for drinking. <laughs> yeah. And actually, old Hitch was a pretty good sailor, too. Hitch was a good fisherman. Uh huh. And Hitch was a good worker. I haven't seen much of Hitch lately. His wife died. Why? I think he sort of turned into a hermit or something. I never hear of him or see him. All right. I've asked about him here and there. Well, okay, we're going to stop. So Clark, what what about the uh, the early trading boats that used to go up and down the coast? You told me as a child you used to see these um, schooners and cargo carrying boats. Well, I didn't know what they were. They were just out there, you know, out of out of my reach. They were a mile or two offshore, you know, just slogging along. Did there Some used to be a lot of them, or no, no, no. But there was just enough of them that it just whetted my intense desire to know more about them. And uh, I finally got acquainted with some of the people who had it. There was uh, one old big fat flush deck schooner called a Pelican. It was really a yacht. And I think the guy was a tourist to come down here a couple months a year, and he left it with... Uh, he left the boat with uh, a couple locals, you know, while he was away. And then he'd come back, and uh, they'd try to get the motor to run, and uh, they'd go cruising with thing or another. And uh, it was anchored just outside, just off of the uh, old Clearwater City Pier. So I got to look at that a lot when I was paddling my little canvas boat around. Then there was another another schooner called the Ina. Tom Anodyne used to come down. Just, he'd come right down the beach. I think he did it on purpose. You know. And what did they draw, these early boats? Well, now, Tom Anodyne's boat must not have drawn three or four feet. It was a heavy-built schooner. And he sailed it to the Bahamas, and he'd be gone four or five months from time, and he'd pick up driftwood and conks and shells and all kind of whatever that he could get, you know, that was, uh, he could sell to the curio shops up in uh, Tarpon. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it was a, a nice looking old schooner, you know. Mm -hmm. Nice shear and a nice bow sprit and clipper bow and all. And that, 
he was an educated man and a an extremely uh, good man about not getting caught by bad weather. He knew a lot about the weather more than anybody I ever talked to. Right. Well, I don't know if he's still alive or gone. I imagine he's passed on. That's been a long time, you know. Well, I saw a lot of cargo boats down in the islands, yeah. down in, like, the West Indies, and, and some of them were just carrying Coca-Colas from one side of the island oh, to the yeah. other. Well, that's the way they got it. They still got wind. And, they and the roads aren't very good, so no. they, they say it's safer with a boat taking Coca-Colas than it right. is putting it on a truck. Right. And their cash flow isn't, isn't very much either, you know. Clark, what were you thinking about when you designed the 52-footer uh, over here? Well, we were caught up in our, our, our yard when I had the boat shop partner. My partner was a, a real elegant sailor. He was a good racing man. He was top money, and uh, he won the nationals in the uh, Flying Dutchman, and I think he's been up to second third in the Snipes in the Nationals several times. That was Frank yeah. Levinson. Frank was a really good sailor mm -hmm. and a really good guy, you know. And I'm just proud to have had him for a partner. He was just a great guy. And this was going to be your last big project, no, or you no, didn't no, even no. think of it? This was just another project. Well, that was a long time back, you know. And he wanted to build a 26-footer on spec. I said, wait a minute, everybody, every shop in the state has got a 22 and a 26 footer. They all got them. I, they're crowded. I just build one twice that big. I'm not afraid to build a big boat. You know, okay. So I went up and just drew one up, you know, like a big old bird. Like I knew what I was doing, which I wasn't sure of a thing about it. It's purely a prototype. But, uh, but would you say it's copied from the old? Uh, I wanted it to look something like some of those old boats that went by. They were some good-looking old schooners. Some uh -huh. of them were a little splintery. But on a breezy day, they would grab you, you know. They looked really good. And move right along. Yeah, right. Had old big gab rigs on them and everything. That's the idea. I wanted that old pretty sheer. Now, I got to tell you this. I don't want to hurt your feelings. I can put up with having a stairway up the trench and have it cut but backwards. Don't touch the shear. Well, I don't care if, that, if you're going to spoil the looks at the top of the boat. There's still sails. I have to put up with that. But what looks nice is a pretty boat. And if it's got to sit out in front of the house and you got got a paper slip print on it. I want it to look nice. I don't want it to look like a drawn with a with a damn ruler. Right. I hate a straight shear. Right. And I don't like that whaleback shear that they had for a few years. I know that makes more room in a small boat, isn't it? Some of those boats were extremely good sailors. And every one of them that would look looked like hell to me. I just didn't like them. Well, you remember Gulvan? Remember yeah. the boat Gulvan? Yeah. We won the Bermuda race on that boat. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. I can't help if they win or what. That was Laurent Giles. Well, uh, he was a really good designer. Well, I really admire your boats, and, and this uh, these 14-footers have been, you know, about the best little skiff that uh, that I can imagine. And the uh, the 14-foot sailboat is a, a real pretty little boat, and it sails really well. It has a well, nice underbody. I've had a sort of a spotted career in boat building. It's been a long one, but I've had a little little go at a lot of different types of things so my experience is varied but my word is not final on any one thing and I'm the first one to tell anybody I'm really not certain well that there's not a better thing possibly right now you know I, I, 
when you designed the windmill, did you think that it was uh, was going to be as fast as it is? Well, I was shooting for something that would go because. Uh, were there other I boats right that went real well? the snipe well? people, you know. And the snipes were already designed. They were out there. Oh, that was a big deal. Everybody thought they had to have a snipe, and that was a that was a, a big money boat then, you know. And uh, the, uh, well, will a windmill beat a snipe around the course? Uh, depending on the weather. Uh huh. If it comes on really heavy, a good snipe, man, and a good snipe mm -hmm. will overpower a windmill. Right. Because a good snipe, the sail by a good snipe sailor, uh, when he finally gets to the windward mark, he can plane too, and he'll plane damn near as fast as a windmill will. Uh huh. But I think that. I think that the windmill had its days, you know, when it seemed like it would nothing catch it. They were they had their days, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, for the money spent, it was a, a really good little rig out of boat. It was an easier boat to take on a trailer than a snipe because it only weighed half as much. Really? It only weighs half as much as a well, snipe? Well, it weighed less than half what a snipe did. Really? Right. Does the snipe have any lead in it? No. No, it had a big old steel dagger board. Those ended uh, up with dagger board. The first ones had uh, drop center board. Or center board. Right. And it turned out the dagger board was a bit faster. Right. So the they went to a dagger board. Windmill. So they went to dagger board. Uh -huh. And the windmill's got a dagger board. And a windmill got a dagger board because it's a manufacturing simplicity, you know. And it's a funny shape on it. Because you get that many out of a sheet of plywood without wasting a single inch. Uh huh. And uh, that was the idea. I've been budgeted all my life, so nothing any very great ever come off of board for me because none of my customers had much money to spare. And uh, generally, after it was all done, I was took aside and wanted to know if I made a mistake. You know, it was always too high. <laughs> well, it, it, some of these new boats you see out, these 140 footers and 130 footers, it seems money's no object. Well, that's, that's three million, five million, ten million dollar boats. I just was not fortunate enough to get into that that great clientele. Uh, uh, well, thanks.